Good morning, folks. Latest payload heading up to the space station took place at the Tsukuba platform in Japan yesterday, each stage going off without a hitch, a smooth and successful launch. Buzz around science pages today is on the Kilonova resultant of two stars colliding. The images linked are interesting, but more so that the initial tenth of a second of the burst was 100 billion times brighter than the residual light. Shared this in the evening news last night. Wish I'd had this information for Chapter 1 of Starwater, further indication that our solar system is doing a bit more swimming than most of us realize. Looking at the Arctic sea ice, you can see the ice again, way below average, in fact almost matching last year's record low. But just as last year's north was melting, the Antarctic set a record for sea ice and just one year later they've shattered it. In fact, they've been shattering their high ice records for days on their way to peak ice. Hawaii? Now visible in Gill's track, but he is weakening fast with another behind him. In the Atlantic, Dorian reformed and contains significant rainfall, is expected to miss the U.S. and head right for Europe. I've been saying the bad storms are sticking south here, and that continues. The high pressure over Australia is isolating the southern coastline for severity, pushing it thereafter to New Zealand, and that high pressure is standing still. Got that same low in Europe as well. The leading line of north moving storms bringing the thunder across the continent and I repeat again, major heat wave out in front of the low. Alaska and west Canadian coastlines will get a line coming straight north off the Pacific. The convergence still stuck in the central states but there are no major warnings tonight. A local weather check around lunch or later will suffice. Virgo let loose our first gamma ray burst in a week yesterday. In last night's news, I showed SOHO solar wind telemetry with rising density, potentially signaling the arrival of the coronal hole streams from these dark areas that faced us days ago. This morning, the ACE telemetry shows that rising density as well, and an uptick in speed. Early in the event, the KP will be quiet, but both geomagnetism and solar energy is beginning to flux. Solar flares? Currently filming a NyQuil commercial. To be frank, even the three beta groups could use a daytime snapping, flaring, CMEing wake up so you can solar max medicine. You can see the primary umbral groups in each are strong, but that's about it. Earth's magnetic connectivity to the sun is spread once more, all over the front and back of the disk. You will remember, we made a minor quake watch, coronal holes were the only factor, but they did have some size. Well, they are now leaving the disk, and last night's watch score dropped to four. We are having some volcanic quakes at the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia and have taken two moderately significant tremors in the past day. The quake watch score bumps back up to five today and might hit six tonight with this incoming coronal hole facing Earth, small but on the equator, so more significant. And there is that geomagnetic and energetic flux beginning due to the coronal hole stream. Helio viewer's data source is lagging. Not much to watch either as she's sound asleep. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.